just want to tell y'all that I haven't uh, talked to any of them up here, and it's so amazing how how God, um, God, God is so good. He's so amazing. But it goes along with what I have written. So it's, it's, just, it's just awesome. Uh, God, God is good all the time. <laughs> God is good. So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much um, for allowing me to be here to, to just share your word, to share the joy that I have in me about your word, Lord. I thank you for that. I, I ask that tonight that everyone here gets a better understanding of the Shekinah joy, the, the joy of God, Lord. I just ask that. I ask that you would just you just fill me right now with the Holy Spirit so it is the Holy Spirit and not me that everyone hears, Lord. I, just, I love you and I praise you and I thank you in Jesus' holy and precious name I pray. Amen. So, um, normally I read a whole lot of scripture. <laughs> Did I say scripture? Did I turn this off? Okay. So, I, normally, you know, I'm, I'm a scripture reader, so most of my, my sermons are scripture. But today, I, I just am so excited that I want to just bring out things and just talk to y'all about stuff, and I'll give you, I'll still give you scripture. You know, y'all aren't getting away with it. Okay, so, did I turn this one off? Okay, good. So, uh, we've been reading through the Bible, and this is, we've, we've passed this, but it's about Moses and, and his life. And then we're going to compare it or parallel it with the Hebrews and how God's hand was on them the whole time. God's hand is on us, actually. So, Moses, okay, Moses was protected by God, and he was hidden for three months. And then Moses was drawn out of the water. Moses had a heart for justice. Moses uh, found a home in a foreign land. Moses was a shepherd. Moses sees the burning bush. Moses hears an intimate call from God. Moses, Moses. When you hear it like twice, that means it was an intimate call. And so Moses hid his face. And Moses is a God's mouthpiece. So... We see in the beginning of Moses' life that he was protected, and we also can look back through his life, all through his life, and see how he was protected, and we can see the hand of God on him. We look, can look back at our own lives, and we can see that too. I can, I, I can tell you one time I was driving, and I had a new car. It was a sports car, and I had two guys in the car with me. One was my boyfriend, and and one was his friend, and I was like, I'm going to just show off, and there was this big curve that I didn't know, and I made it, but I was praying. I said, oh, Lord, help me, And but I made it. Well, I learned not to do that after that, but I could see God's hand was on me. That could have been a very bad day. I might not be here talking to y'all, but God has a plan. He has a plan for everybody's life, and he gets us through those crazy teenage years that, like, I... I just explained. That just came to my mind. How about that? Maybe I looked at you and thought of sports cars. <laughs> so, so uh, I know it's true because we wouldn't be here if God didn't have a plan for us. You have a purpose, and that is to spread the gospel. Each and every person that is a believer in Jesus Christ, that is our purpose, is to spread the gospel. In Matthew 28, 18 and 20 it says and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of age okay so Moses' mother protected him for, for three months before she made the basket and put him in the, the river. 
Okay, so he was protected by his mother, and then he was drawn out by the daughter of Pharaoh. He was nurtured by his mother physically and spiritually because remember, his sister was there, Miriam, and she said, I know someone who can nurse the baby for you. Well, they nurse longer than we do, and she nurtured him and taught him that he was a Hebrew. Okay? And then he was taught by the best in the land. Remember, he was Pharaoh's grandson. He fled to a foreign land. He was a shepherd leading and protecting his flock. He was called by the he was called by name by God in an intimate way. He was brought near and on holy ground. He spoke with God. Keith, I can hear you. He was in his presence. He didn't hear me. And God, uh, he was called to do for others as God had done for him. Now, let's look at how the Hebrews were protected in a similar way. God's chosen ones were protected. He was drawn out, they were drawn out of Egypt to go into the promised land, nurtured with manna from heaven. Now we get nurtured by the word of God. Taught by God through Moses, taught by the best God. Moses led his flock, the, the Hebrews, and God called them his people. They were brought near holy ground and they and leading them with fire by night and a cloud by day and spoke to them through Moses. I keep going over this because it's it's very important to see the parallel of of it. The Bible is so amazing. You can I, I just get so excited when you do y'all get excited when you read the word? It is, it is so amazing. So Moses was trained up for such a time as this. He had his training, and now he had God's guidance and protection, which is his love. Moses was a prince of Egypt, then to a humble shepherd. <clears throat> Moses was trained by the best in that time. He was taught by the best teacher of the day. Only the best would do. I don't know if you know this, but only a few people got to be learned people were illiterate they did not they couldn't read only the elite got to be taught by people so he was well he was a well educated man and most uh, the and um, most did not have the privilege of learning to read everyone likes to to mention that Moses stuttered and sometimes we think of people who stuttered aren't as bright as other people, but that is not so. It doesn't really say that he stuttered. It said he had a speech impediment. Maybe he had a lisp. We don't know, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't educated. So um, he was well educated. And I will say more than his brother Aaron, because Aaron was raised by his mother who is a Hebrew. He didn't have the privilege of Moses. Um, like I said, only the prominent were, were taught. And God can use whoever he wants. It's his will, right? So he fled to Midian after having the knowledge that it was uh, known what he had done to the Egyptian. You know, when you get caught, you run, don't you? <laughs> You don't want the repercussion of what happens, do you? So he, he fled and he ran. But then he came to a well. Wells are big in the Bible. You, you see the well a lot. But he came to a well and he was sitting there and uh, Jethro's daughters were shepherds. And they came to, to the well and they were going to feed their, their sheep. And then the male shepherds, they came 
and they wasn't going to let them. They were like, go away, go away, go away to the women. But Moses, being a just man, he liked justice. He stood up and he said, no, no, no. They got here first. They're going to... And I, I just imagine Moses was like a stout man <laughs> to stand up. You, you know, I just in my head, I'm thinking, he's like going, oh, no, you did not. <laughs> you know, and he stood up for them. Well, then they go back home to their father. And when they go to their father, he says, how are you here so early? And he said, oh, this Egyptian man, he came and he stood up for us while we were going to feed the sheep. And, and he goes, well, why didn't you bring him home? Well, then I'm getting off my notes, but I, it's the same thing. So, but anyway, he goes and he comes home and then he gives his wife, um, Zipporah, Zipporah, to Moses because he was a just man. I just think, I just think the well is it's so significant in the Bible because it's living water. We have living water. The well is an important staple in the Bible. There's a lot surrounded by water. So um, it said, uh, he sat at the well and witnessed the abuse of the women. So he stood up for them, a man of justice. Raul, the Midianite priest, gave the hand of his daughter to Zipporah in marriage. And he also became a shepherd then. So here he was, very studious, in a palace. And he goes, and now he's a shepherd. Who else was, was a prince and comes down and he becomes a shepherd? Huh? Do y'all know? <laughs> yeah. So I just think it, the Bible has so much parallel to it. So they were protected, taught, justice, prince, to humble shepherd, a relationship. God knows his name, sends him out, never leaves him. He was 80 years old. So you're never too old to do anything. It's God's timing, not our timing. Moses was trained for what God was going to use him for, just like David in the Bible was trained before he could go and do what God had in store for him. And he was a shepherd as well. So we can see it throughout the Bible. I can see it in my life as well as I'm sure you can too. Think about it. How God has protected you throughout your life. How life has trained you and or taught you. How God's hand has been on your life. He's been with me. He is with me always. While, while tending the flock near Mount Horeb, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush. The bush was burning but was not consumed. I just got to tell you, he's out there. He's been, he's been out there forever and ever. You know, just, just, he knows this land. There's a bush, he sees something and he goes to it and he's like, huh, that bush isn't being consumed with fire. That's because that was the glory of God. That was the Shekinah glory there. It wasn't consuming the bush. He was there because God can't expose himself so much because we can't handle it. You know, just like when Moses was hid in the cleft of the rock, he can't see him face to face. So anyway, uh, as he approached the bush, God spoke, Remove your sandals for this is holy ground. When he learned it was I am, he hid his face. Now, I want y'all to listen. He hid his face. That was like his first encounter with God. And he hid his face. I bet we were all, like, when we, like, fall on our knees, on our face, when we become face-to-face -face with the Lord. Because he is so magnificent. So, our God is... Is a, a God who wants a relationship with his children. 
He is a God with a name and a history. I am who I am. That's who he is. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all. In Exodus 3, 13 and 15. It says, Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus, you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am sent you, sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord your God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever and this is my memorial name to all generations so i am that we're we're all generations that's his name so moses goes up to the mountain and he comes down uh i'm i'm bouncing around a little bit but y you'll get it after you know he gets all the the hebrews out of egypt and Moses goes up to the mountain and he comes down with the glow of God. The Shekinah glory was all over his face. He covered his face when he came down off of the mountain. But while he was with God on the mountain, he asked to see his face. See the difference in when he didn't have a relationship and he, and he did? Before he hid his face. Now he's saying, Lord, show me your face. God, show me your face. I just think that y'all just got to read, read, read. It's so good. Y'all, I'm just going to be your cheerleader. Read the Bible. It's, it's, got, it's got lots of good stuff in here. And so then Moses said, I pray. This is in Exodus 33, 18 and 23. Then Moses said, I pray to you, show me your glory with an exclamation point. Show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Exclamation point. Then the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock, and it will come about, while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cliff of a rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed. Can you believe that? His hand covers him. His hand. Do y'all get how big our God is? Do y'all do y'all get that? His hand covered it was probably his fingernail or something. <laughs> but but uh, until I pass, then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Then you go to Exodus thirty four, twenty nine through thirty five. It came about when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai. And the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hands as he was coming down from the mountain that Moses did not know that his skin of his face shone because, he, because of his speaking with him, God. So when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke to them. And afterwards, all the sons of Israel came near. And he commanded them to do everything that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. 
But whenever Moses went to be before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And whenever he came out and spoke to the sons of Israel, what he had been commanded, the sons of Israel would see, his, see the face of Moses that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses would replace the veil over his face until he went to speak with God again. I'm just telling you that this is amazing. When you are in a relationship with God, when we are in the presence of our God, the Most High God, the true living God, it is amazing how we shine. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to shine our light in this world, in this dark world. How can we do it if we're never in a relationship with our God? When we're with God, then you just glow. Just like Moses. It's the same thing. We may not be like, oh my goodness, you can't, you, but, but people see it. They see the glory of God through you. So we need to. That's what's wrong with the church today. Is the church does not have a relationship with our God and they are more inclined to the darkness instead of light. So, so worship Him. Not for what He has done, but for who He is. God is the creator of everything. God, we need the awe of God. God is everything. We would not be here if it wasn't for our God. He has protected us. He has put his hand over us as he passes by. Okay? He protects us. But we need to want to see his face. We need him. The unchanging God. He is the same today, tomorrow, and yesterday. God does not change. We change. We can be reborn and be changed into the likeness of God. Growing and glowing more like Him each day that goes by. I heard this somewhere, but I don't know who wrote it, who said it. So I, if anybody knows, we'll credit them. But I don't know who it was. So, you cannot step into a river twice. We are, the, are not the same as yesterday. Once you step into a river and you try stepping back into the same place, you cannot. It has already moved on. It is a flowing river, not standing still. God does not want us to be stagnant. We have the living water in us, so we should always be moving. The Holy Spirit is like wind and fire. They are always moving. Jesus said to follow him, not stand still. And we're supposed to follow. That's a movement. We're supposed to move. He did not stop moving and spreading the love of God. Jesus Christ moved. He was here a little while, but he moved everywhere. Go and be the living water to someone. Be a breath of fresh air. Stoking the fire that is within people. Let us be the light in the world for Jesus so that the Shekinah glory is experienced. The presence of God. That, it's, it dwells. The Shekinah glory, it dwells. You're dwelt with them. You're with them. You're, you're, you're in His presence. The awe of God. Do we have the awe of God? Most of the churches in the United States do not have the awe of God. They do not know God of the Bible. Do you know that he is the creator of all things? There is nothing without God. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. He is life. He is love. And he is the only way. He knows all because he created all. He is he 
who is the I am wants to call you friend, his child. That in itself should give you an awe of God. Right there, he, a God that wants to be in a relationship with you. Oh, I just, I don't know if y'all, if I'm expressing it good enough, but he is so mighty. He is so good. He is like, we should all just drop to our knees now just knowing that he loves us so much that he sent his only son. Would you send your child? No. He sent his only son to die for us. Right there's an awe. He created this earth and the way it rotates and it don't blow us up. That's an awe. Babies being born is an awe. The breath that we breathe and then we exhale and it's for the plants. That is an awe of God. I'm just saying, we serve a mighty God. The awe of God needs to be shown to people. We need to shine like Moses was shining and show people who our God is and what he can do for us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, again, the privilege that you have let me come up here and speak to people and, and let them just hear a little bit of what, what is on my heart, dear Heavenly Father. And I just pray that, that, uh, that we go out and we show people, tell people, sing to people, whatever we do, the awe of God and everything that we do, just let them see a little piece of you, Lord. I pray that and I just ask that you help us as we do it if we don't if we don't feel strong enough if we feel like we're weak or whatever but we, when we have you we can do anything we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us we can do this Lord just just give us the nudge give us a person that we can talk to to express you to them dear Heavenly Father and I just ask um, right now that everyone that is here as they go home would you just uh, put a hedge of protection around them? And I just, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for the breath that we breathe. I want to thank you for the love that you have for us. I want to thank you for the mercy and the grace that you give us. Lord, we don't deserve any of it. We don't deserve anything. But thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Thank you for being the creator of all things. Thank you for... For being love. You are love. Thank you so much. Thank you for the stars in the sky. The sky. Uh, just the, the stars and the moon that give us light. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have done. Lord, the grass, the birds that sing, that gives this lovely melody. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for, for who you are. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray.
glory to me. Glory to His. Come on, sing it with me. Oh, we say glory. this in probably almost 30 years you said something today that the Lord kind of quickened my spirit I remember when I first got saved we went on a canoe rafting trip you know canoe down the Duck River how many know where the Duck River is and we was on this little canoe trip and as we was going down this canoe down this the rapids or the river kind of pulls you and the Lord the very first time God gave me a revelation of something, very first thing, and I had forgot all about it till you just said something about a river tonight, stepping into a river. And the Lord quickened my spirit and reminded me of it. So I think it, it's, it's good that I share this. The Lord told me, he said, back then, he said, see how this river is flowing? He said, that's what's happening with the people of the world. They're flowing down the river and they're drowning and they have nowhere to grab. Nowhere to grab at all. They just are, are being carried away the way the river flows. But he said, see that brush pile down there with that big limb sticking out? And I looked and I said, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I see it, Lord. He said, that is me when people grab onto it. That is me saving them from being swept away. And I thought to myself, wow, that's interesting. You know, that's interesting how God gave an analogy of how the river is, is kind of sweeping people away, but the log there that's sticking out over the river, if we'll grab onto that, we'll be saved from being swept away. And you kind of, kind of uh, touched base a little bit on it that, that, you know, the world is sweeping away right now, and they're drowning. And they don't know where they're going. They're just sweeping away. But if we'll grab onto the rock and grab onto the log, which is Christ Jesus, and he'll save us from drowning and save us from, from destruction. So I just wanted to bring that up a little bit because uh, I had never thought about it for 30 years. And that was one of the very first revelations he showed me on the river when we was in a canoe that the world is sweeping away. But I'm like that log over there. If they'll just grab onto that, they'll be saved. And I thought, wow, Lord, that's, that's interesting. See how he uses nature sometimes to, to reveal who he is? But you are true about one thing. You, you, you spoke another revelation tonight that Brother Danny knows just this week. That's why he's laughing. Just this week at his workplace. I'll let him share it if he would like. But how we are to be the light of the world and how exactly that's what the Lord did in him this week to a customer that he never knew. And Brother Danny, you can share that if you want to. And how God turned that around, a complete stranger. Come on up here, Brother Danny. How he turned that completely around and 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 God brought to this new person, this friend of his that he is now a friend of, a revelation of who God really is. Share a little bit about it. It kind of goes on. Amen. I just... I got to work on... was. Was it Tuesday, I said? And I uh, usually I never del take people home. Usually I never take people home or anything like that. And uh, the guy doing that wasn't there. So I was like, that's funny, you know. I, then they asked me. I was like, okay. So I went. But as I'm driving, it's like the Lord's speaking to me, <laughs> telling me that I need to speak to this person. And I feel it too. I always have this feeling that I have. And then I, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know that this, this is something that me, you want me to speak to this guy. So I go to the door, and I pick him up, and we start driving. And uh, I was like, Lord, what should I say? Like, you'd, you've always got to ask God to lead you, because you never know how the whole thing's going to turn out. You, you've got to ask him to give you direction. And so I, uh, 
as I drive, he says some things like, uh, I just God needs to just protect us with a storm coming. Then I immediately I knew, I was like, God, he's a Christian or he's saved or something. So I go along with it and say, yeah, God will protect us and he's going to keep us safe. And I start speaking, speaking to him uh, just, just about, about the things happening in the church, how God's, God's using me and I'm praying for people in the front. I said, I never, I said, I've never, I, I'm almost at the church a year and just the way that God's working, moving through me, it's like, I've grown up in this, but you don't know what God wants for you until you allow Him to use you. And when you, when you start letting God use you, you're going to realize, man, God, I have this gift that you've put down inside of me that I never knew that I ever had. And I've just seen it. Pastor Steve knows how God's just working with me in the church with people. And in the beginning, I wondered, I was like, Lord, is that really you? <laughs> or is it just me, my mind, imagination? But then God, give me, God gives me confirmation. And the things that I say, it's like exactly to the T. And, but I just want to read you just the text as I spoke to this guy. I, I didn't know what he was going through. But I was like, you know, I'm going to sh share God with this guy today. And so he said to me, he, he asked me for my number. And when I got to the shop, he said, there, there was something different about me. He said, there's something different about you. And so I was like, okay, there's something different. So he took my number. And he said, he, t he texted me later that day. But as I was driving to, ever after I spoke to him, he said, I was going through such a hard time today. And I didn't know what I was going to do. But just what you said just brought like life into him. And uh, he says, this is his text. He says, hello again. Hello again, Danny. It was such a pleasure meeting you this morning. Really made my day and filled me with the Spirit. I hope you and your family stay safe in the storm. And we will absolutely be in touch. And then he put God bless at the bottom. <laughs> so just a complete stranger. And I was wondering, I was like, God, how? Like... He, when after he texted me, I was like, God, he must have seen something. I don't know what it is, but I could feel, I, I could, the, just the way he uh, responded to what I said. He told me he goes to a church somewhere, and I said, I, I'm going to invite him because this wasn't just by accident. I don't believe in accidents. So as I go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite this guy. But it, it's exactly what you said. You need to be the light. And I told Pastor Steve, I was like, man, I said, that's our problem in this world. I said, we are not a light to people anymore. The churches, that we have these, we have these big, I call them organizations now. It's not churches anymore. It's a quick word. It's a quick word in music and make you feel good. You know, but there's nothing to, that we can keep inside of us. That we'd leave, we need to leave differently when we, as we walk out. As, and we really do. We need to leave differently. And I, that's, that's whenever I, I've come to the front, I've asked God, I've just asked the Holy Spirit to lead me every single time. I said, let it be, let it be uh, your words, Lord. It's not me. But when I do that, even on Sunday, that one, the one lady that was over here and also someone at the back, but the one lady over here, I just pick, I just pick up things and the Holy Spirit just speaks to me. And when I, as I speak, she's just she's saying, yes, it is. It's like that. And that's just how God gives me the way he's using me in that way. But I'm allowing him. We've got to allow him to use us. Amen. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so, as I prayed last night, I saw someone, <laughs> I just heard the Holy Spirit say something to me last night as I was praying. And a lot of our, in the church, a lot of us, we haven't seen the answer to a miracle. But the words he gave, I just heard the soft voice, it's coming. It's coming. So we, we need to get ready in this church for what God's going to do. You're going to be amazed to see what he's going to do in the future of this church. I saw people last night as I was praying. It, I saw people in the front of me. People with needs. And I'm telling you, God's going to, they're going to receive their miracles in the weeks to come. I, I just saw them as I held their hands praying. I just saw how God was releasing things and healing and taking away that bondages that are in their lives. Because we, the church is full of bondages today, full of problems. And God has to arise. He's got to step up. We've got to allow Him to work inside of us. When He comes in, the trash will go out. Amen? And that's, what I'm, that's, that's how I'm even in my life. I'm trying to be holy before God. Whatever I do, I'm very sensitive to the way I work with God. I listen to everything He says. 
And that's what we need to do. Just open up your ears and just listen to what he says tonight. Amen.